Like newborn infants, you must long for the pure spiritual milk that in him you may grow to salvation. Good morning and welcome to St. John Bosco Parish. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. Our celebrant is our pastor, Father Keith. Now please stand as we begin our celebration, singing our entrance hymn to our risen Lord. Jesus Christ is risen today. Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. We prepare ourselves for this Mass by acknowledging our sinfulness and asking for God's forgiveness. You came to gather all people into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. And you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 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 Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of good will. praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to 
mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We now invite our students, kindergarten through grade four, to go into the church hall for a special children's liturgy of the word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was one heart and one mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. 
has made, let us rejoice and be glad. The Lord's right hand has struck with power, the Lord's right hand is exalted. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The builders rejected has become the coroner's stone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world? but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. According to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, 
I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas said, answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. The apostles here were very afraid. Terrified might be the better word. And so they went into hiding. They locked themselves in the upper room where no one could get to them. Their close friend had just been executed as a criminal. And they were thinking that their close association with that criminal would lead them to the same bad ending. Things did not look too promising for any of them. But then at the height of their fear, their friend, now the risen Christ, appeared to them for the very first time, despite the locked doors. And he said to them, not once, but twice, peace be with you. And the terrified disciples Instead of saying, we can't be seen with you, or we want no part of this anymore, they immediately rejoiced at his presence. And they experienced a calmness that they hadn't known for a long time. From the moment they saw him in that upper room, everything changed for them. The promises made by Christ had now been fulfilled. They can now unlock the door and continue their mission with a new courage, with a new purpose. Except for Thomas, who was not there for that appearance, and who, who had a very difficult time believing the story told to him by those who were there. Maybe Thomas wanted to believe the stories they were telling him, but he fell short of putting any real trust in the idea that their teacher, their friend, was still there among them. That fear displayed by the disciples in the first half of the gospel and the doubt possessed by Thomas in the second half of the gospel story are two responses that Jesus would not have necessarily seen as being in opposition with the faith that he was calling for. Christ would know that fear is a very natural human instinct that goes into effect whenever someone's well-being was put at risk, whenever there was a threat of danger. And it wouldn't be too far-fetched to think that Jesus Christ himself experienced moments of fear along his journey especially during the final days of his passion. And doubt, Jesus would know from his interactions with people along the way, could actually lead someone to a greater faith in him. If that doubt leads to more questioning and searching, as it did with Thomas in today's story. This gospel, which is offered to us on the first Sunday after Easter every year, I think gives all of us a greater insight into living a life of faith. Because it shows us how Jesus deals with people who are struggling to believe. 
It shows us how Jesus deals with the people who find it difficult to put their faith and trust in a God that they cannot see. And we notice here what Jesus does not do. Jesus did not scold or reprimand the disciples because of their fear. And he doesn't become angry with Thomas because of his doubt. Jesus did not say or do anything that would make his followers feel inadequate or ashamed. He doesn't even show any disappointment with them. To his disciples, he merely says, peace be with you. And he turns to Thomas and invites him to believe. For the disciples who were locked behind the doors of fear, Jesus brought the gifts of confidence and strength. And for Thomas, who was weighed down by uncertainty, Jesus offered the gift of deeper faith. Because the goal here for Jesus was for all of them to leave that upper room with greater faith and greater trust in him. Greater faith and greater trust in his risen life. And whether the obstacles to that faith were fear or doubt or anything else that could prevent people from seeing God's presence among us, Jesus shows us that he has the gentle power and the merciful desire to remove whatever barriers there are, to open the doors that are locked inside, and to lead his followers to a deeper level of trust in God's love for us. But it doesn't end there for his followers. It doesn't end there for any of us. Because along with giving them that renewed peace and giving them greater faith, Jesus also challenges them and us today to do the same for others. He says here, as the Father has sent me, so now I send you. So now it becomes our mission to show others that God is alive, that Jesus Christ is risen, to give evidence to others by the way that we live, that there are reasons for others to believe in the risen Christ. Today, the church celebrates Divine Mercy Sunday when we highlight and proclaim all the mercies of the Lord. The message behind the upper room appearance is that Jesus wants the disciples to know that his church is founded on forgiveness and has a mission now to bring about his peace through forgiveness of others. To the disciples who were afraid, to Thomas who hesitated to believe, Jesus was saying, in a sense, look at me. And to the people around us who are still fearful, who are still in disbelief, who are still reluctant, Jesus wants us to say the same thing. Look at me. Hoping that the way that we choose to live our lives will be enough evidence for others that belief in the risen Christ can make a difference. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who is crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in a life of the world to come. Amen. We have not seen, but still believe. With confident faith, we bring our concerns before God. For greater faith and trust in the power and presence of the risen Christ in our world and our lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's abundant mercy and love may be enjoyed by all who believe, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the baptized, especially Peyton Jennifer Jacobs and Sophia Lee Rios, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the members of this community strive to be of one heart and one mind in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our deceased loved ones, and in a special way for Peter and Antoinette Vorio, for whom this Mass is being offered, welcome them into the joy of your kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions held in the silence of our hearts, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous God, plant your precious gift of faith ever deeper in our hearts. We ask us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in singing our offertory hymn, We Walk by Faith. sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but at this time above all, to praise you more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers sing together the hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <clears throat> Blessed is he who comes. 
Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, the clergy and all your faithful. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially Peter and Antoinette Vario, for whom this Mass is being offered. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, St. John Bosco, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Confidence, we pray as Jesus taught us. Temptation, but 
deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please join us in singing our meditation hymn, O Sons and Daughters. We will sing two verses at a time before returning to the refrain. Hallelujah! When Thomas first thought 
tidings heard, that Saul had seen the risen Lord, he doubted the disciples' word. Alleluia! 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 At night the apostles met in fear, among them came their master dear, and said, My peace be with you here. Alleluia! My peers and side, O Thomas, see, and moved upon my hands, my feet, that faithless heart believing be. Alleluia! He saw the feet, the hands, the side. You are my Lord and God, he cried. Alleluia! How blessed are they who have not seen, and yet whose faith has constant been, for they eternal life shall win. Alleluia! Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Just a few announcements today. The Reefs across America will be selling tickets for their April 14th pancake breakfast. They'll be at the uh, exit today. Also selling tickets is our hospitality ministry, uh, selling tickets for the April 19th Country Dance. Additional ticket information can be found in a bulletin. Lunch Bunch is going to be held this Tuesday at 12 o'clock here at St. Mary Hall. All are invited to uh, join us for coffee and in the hall after Mass. And a reminder to students in grades 5 through 12, you're invited to a brief teen Bible chat that will take place in the hall right after Mass. Thank you. And now let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Heavenly Father, you have created us for a definite purpose. Grant us the grace to know the path you have planned for each of us in this life and to respond with a generous yes. Make my parish, my home, and my heart fruitful ground for your gift of vocations to the priesthood of Jesus Christ. May our young men respond to your call with courage and zeal. Store among them a desire and a strength to be good and holy priests. To make our prayer for priestly vocations to you, Father, in the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for us. St. Joseph, Patron of our Archdiocese, pray for us. Blessed Michael McGivney, pray for us. Please join us in singing our recessional hymn, Peace Be With You. <laughs> 